Are you considering installing a round pump to irrigate your uh, turf grass in your lawn? If so, this video might be helpful. At least one or two things in it might be helpful to you. Some things I've learned over the years, things I've changed a little bit on a round pump that you just purchased from a seller. And uh, maybe it will uh, motivate you to do a little bit of a field testing yourself on your round pump. See if you can make a better mouse trap. Okay, let's get started. How would you like to have to walk through something like this? Stickers everywhere, thick undergrowth. It's terrible. Plus, there's hidden ravines underneath all these leaves, sinkholes, and quicksand. Hello. This is an introduction to uh, a three-part series on ram pump hacks, tips, and modifications. I was going to start off the series with a, uh, uh, a segment on ram pump site selection and site preparation, but in the interest of not riling up certain groups on YouTube, you know, maintaining their community standards. I will not be given details of what it took to gain access to that area. Instead, we're going to go right on into part one, which takes us down to my beautiful creek, my spring-fed creek. Part one will consist of uh, some some information about tools and just basic things that the uh, newcomer might understand about uh, a ram pump. We'll be down in the creek for that. Uh, part two will be where I come out of the creek and we look at the delivery system and how I use my ram pump to irrigate my yard. And then in part three, we're going to go back down to the creek because I want to encourage you to, if you have a ram pump, don't give up on it. Don't, don't think you just bought a device that that's the end all. I want to encourage people to start experimenting, be creative. We're, we're, at the, we're at the very beginning of this ram pump idea. I know it's been around a long time, but it hasn't been around here a long time. So in part three, we're going to go back down and actually do an experiment. And I hope you find this entertaining and informative. Part one, the creek. The next thing I want to talk about is ball valves. This is a two inch ball valve. And well, maybe three inches. I, I can't remember. I'm not using it right now. But you see all this black stuff on the PVC pipe? That same stuff gets inside these pipes. I don't care how clean your creek looks, you're going to end up with stuff that's worse than rust. You know, people say, well, if I'm using a metal, uh, a metal fitting, you know, I might get corrosion. No, I'm telling you what, PVC, rubber, it doesn't matter what you put in your creek unless you have a special creek. You're going to have a hard time opening and closing these valves and within weeks after your installation. Let me show you what I do. You do not want to come out here with a pair of offset pliers or a big rock, which is what I've done in the past, and try and open and close this valve by beating on the wings. They'll break. Instead, get you a pipe wrench or something that you can put in there and open and close it. And to make it even safer, just throw a, a rag across there and do it. That way it'll protect the wings even more. Now these face towels, or hand towels, I don't know what you call them. They're dirt cheap on Amazon. I think somebody's on there selling stuff that's 
been rejected by some of these commercial laundry services, you know, for uniform uh, employees. You get a whole stack of these dirt cheap, and they're cotton, and cotton is good for coming down to work on your ram pump. I'll tell you what's not good is a microfiber towel. Those microfibers, they'll pick up every little blade of grass, crushed up leaves, dirt, anything. It, they're not very, very good for working down in an environment like this. But these cotton towels are great, and when they get dirty, take them and throw them in the wash machine, you can even bleach them. Mama won't be so mad at you. I want to go back to this ball valve for a minute. You might be thinking, well, you know, you're not going to have any big ball valves on your system. Maybe not. But the same principle applies to even the smallest ball valve. Go ahead and use a pipe wrench or something to open and close that once it starts getting stiff. Don't, don't beat on it, regardless of the size. Now, a lot of people will have this for a clean out. That's what I used it for. This was my intake. I had this running uh, through a little crevice and a rock by my spring. And on this end, I had an intake manifold and an intake filter. And it ran down this pipe and came out here. And this was my uh, <coughs> this was my drive pipe right here and that way if this thing got clogged up I could just open this valve as a clean out you may have one of these valves on a standpipe or something so keep that in mind if you go to a home improvement center like uh, Lowe's Home Depot something like that they're gonna have their PVC pipe in two basic categories you know, you're going to have your Schedule 40 PVC that most people are accustomed to. But there's also going to be a different section for waste pipes. Waste pipes and fittings. And the difference, you can see on this waste, this uh, Y-shaped uh, waste connector right here, that the collar on that is maybe an inch at the most. Whereas on a standard schedule 40 it's almost twice that that deep so these things are usually cheaper and you have if you're buying waste type PVC uh, it, it's not made for pressures over I think 90 psi I, I, I could be wrong on that but anyhow for high pressure you're supposed to use standard schedule 40 PVC but with a ram pump if you're looking at an intake, there's going to be very little pressure put on your intake. So go ahead and if you need something, if you want to design yourself something a little crazy, don't be afraid to use this uh, waste type PVC. Okay, let's come down this ladder, get in the creek, and go look at my system, my ram pump system. I'll start at the intake and just work my way back to the house. And maybe you'll see something that you like. Uh, everything I'm going to show you today are issues I've had at some point and how I solved them. Uh, even coming down a ladder. Yeah. I'm not trying to talk down to anybody, but listen, there could be somebody watching this video who's never even stepped on a ladder before in their life. Or have never been in the woods before. Things we take for granted. It may be a person's first time with this. If you're going to put a ladder into a creek, make sure you do not step above the fulcrum. The fulcrum is the point where the ladder could pivot. And you see right there on the ground, if you step up on rungs higher than that ground level, this is just an aluminum ladder. You could be a lot heavier than the weight of the ladder and the thing could tilt and then instead of being stuck in the ground, it could just slide right off. You give yourself a bloody nose. Now in my case, I'm lucky enough to have some roots right here at the base of my ladder. And I have it tied down. So this ladder is not going anywhere. It not only makes it more secure, but it helps prevent it from being washed away when we have flash floods down here. 
Today I'll be discussing my round pump, which is a three-quarter inch round pump, three-quarter inch drive pipe. Over the past five years I've experimented with half inch, three-quarter inch, and one inch. And I'm using mine solely for irrigating, irrigating a yard. And I find that three-quarter inch is the best fit for me. I get enough water to take care of five to seven thousand square feet of lawn more water than I need actually per week and uh, I, I like the three-quarter inch pipe because you, you can bend around some corners with it it's easy to handle if you start getting an inch or, or bigger it's expensive and uh, even the fittings are more expensive than the three-quarter inch but if you just want to water your chickens Maybe half inch is all you need. But we're going to be looking at three quarter inch today. I'm using three quarter inch dry pipe. Let me move this sand back. That means I want my intake to be at least twice, twice that diameter. So I've got three quarter inch pipe and I've got a two inch uh, fitting on the end of it with some strainers and you can get those strainers off of Amazon. I showed you that crazy intake earlier in an earlier clip and I had it in this little slot but we had a drought back in June and I had no water running through here so I had to go to a siphon had some rain since June and so uh, you know my pool is basically full right now but because of the possibility of a drought and I've already got my siphon installed this is what I'm going to use if you're going to use a siphon I'd advise against putting any kind of 90 degree angle in your system 45 is all you need if you start going 90 degrees uh, you're going to risk having an airlock in there somewhere because there's bubbles that get into these lines and just a couple of bubbles you may not notice it but if you had a 90 degree fitting on that thing uh, a whole bunch of little bubbles could accumulate in there and then you're not getting any water through it. Water seeks its own level. In other words right now even though my intake is way down there in the creek it's actually up to here in my pipe water won't seek its own level conversely if my pool drops I might have to be siphoning from four to six inches farther away and every inch that you have to siphon puts a drag on the amount of water that goes through your drought pipe it's like trying to row a boat with dragging an anchor behind you you know the weight of the water in the pipe will pull water from this pool as long as the end of my pipe is lower than the uh, than the intake valve here but the point I'm trying to make here is uh, don't use 90s if you can avoid it 45s makes it a little smoother turn and uh, you can you can go online and see how to make a siphon you'll want a valve up here close to your intake and then one down there near your round pump I've got an extra one on mine I've got mine right next to the uh, to the intake that's so I can come up here and clean those things off with a toothbrush or something and not have to worry about getting a lot of air up in my line This spring produces a heck of a lot of water and earlier in the year I bought some pig rabble and stuff like that and put down in these crevices trying to block all this water being wasted here and I ended up with a bad infestation of duckweed and algae but as long as I have it like this running water uh, it seems to keep the pool pretty clear. My only problem has been if I go a couple of weeks without water and this thing stops running out 
I can actually suck more water out of this spring pool than it's producing and my pumps will stop. And we'll go down here and look, as you can see, I've got two ram pumps pulling out of one pool. So, but for that today, with these conditions, it's very easy for me to use two ram pumps. For me, sandbags have been a lifesaver. I, you know, I'm sitting here on top of granite rock. There's no way I could, you know, drive a, a rebar stake into the into this rock and tie my tie my drive pipe down. I just throw a sandbag on it, and they're they're cheap. You can get those from uh, Amazon. We'll be talking about that a little bit more in a minute. For me, sandbags have been a lifesaver. I, you know, I'm sitting here on top of granite rock. There's no way I could, you know, drive a, a rebar stake into the into this rock and tie my tie my drive pipe down. I just throw a sandbag on it, and they're they're cheap. You can get those from uh, Amazon. We'll be talking about that a little bit more in a minute. If you order bags off Amazon, uh, they're going to come with some string up here at the top so you can tie it together. Personally, I, I would not do that. Especially if you're going to put your sandbags in a creek. It just doesn't secure it enough to keep the sand in the bag. Instead, use these things here. They're called wire bag ties. And you get your sandbag full of sand, put a couple of twists around the neck of it, and then that a little bit, put it around the neck, and then you'll need a tie twister little device like that to put in the holes on these bag ties and just turn that around. Put two put two twists two twist ties on each bag, at least two. Most creeks have a lot of sand. This creek has nothing but sand. It's all sand sand and bedrock. But uh, you can you can look for uh, you know shoals and things like that. That's where sand normally piles up after you've had a big rain and the creek subsides. You'll find big sand piles. And it doesn't matter if you're digging in the water or not. That'll come right out of the bag. All you need is a little garden trowel. You don't need any big shovel. It's a one-man job. And just about anywhere you go, there's plenty of sand. When I first decided to uh, install a ram pump in this creek, I thought I would just uh, get some rebar and drive it in. But you, you cannot go more than four, four inches deep anywhere in here and you're on bedrock. I could not find a single spot from here downstream a thousand feet or more. I cannot find a single spot to drive a rebar into the into the ground. So these sandbags have saved the day for me. And it's really good to keep your drive pipe as secure as possible to get more out of it. Let's talk about some tools I think are critical if you're going to have a ram pump and, and maintain it regularly. The first thing is some sort of pipe cutter. Now this particular one here, a Husky, I don't remember where I got it, maybe Lowe's, Home Depot, maybe even off Amazon, but uh, it will easily cut up to one inch of pipe, and it's especially easy to cut three quarter inch pipe. It's a ratchet type wrench, and it doesn't take much pressure, you know, an average size person can can make this thing work. I also have another one that will go up to two inches, but trust me, I'm not even going to show you that one today because it you you got to be Charles Atlas to squeeze squeeze one of these things through two inches of PVC pipe. Or maybe I'm just a weakling, but it was hard for me.
the ratchet style pipe shears are pretty nice if you're cutting things less than one inch diameter I would say if you're going to cut inch and a half two inch diameter PVC pipe I would just go for a, a hacksaw you can get this at, it's got the craftsman name so probably came from Lowe's but it's so much easier to cut with a hacksaw than it is to try to use a pair of ratchet shears on something as big around as two inch diameter uh, of course after you've uh, made your cut you want to make sure you get all the burrs off the uh, off the mouth of the of the pipe this is a strap wrench very similar to uh, the, the kind of uh, wrench you would use if you were replacing the oil filter on your car it's just got a handle for a lever and a uh, rubber strap on it it's got the cobalt uh, brand name on it so this probably was purchased at Lowe's uh, th this particular one I'm holding in my hand is excellent for going around a two inch pressure tank uh, you can get them bigger you know for instance if you had a two inch or a four inch intake on your system uh, you might need a, a strap that that will handle a larger diameter PVC pipe you know, really good for tightening and unscrewing uh, pressure tanks uh, intake systems and things like that course offset pliers really important to any kind of a uh, project involving a ram pump you can I think I bought this from Amazon it's called work pro it's cheap set uh, but I think it came with three or four different size pliers in it and they're adjustable so I, I like I like something like this and they're uh, narrow enough that you can get in there if you've used uh, close nipples to connect your uh, sections of your ram pump this is narrow enough that it'll get in between the uh, check valves or whatever to get to the uh, to the to the nipple another one of my favorite tools is this thing i don't know what you call it it's like a combination set of pliers but it's also a pipe wrench it has a little knuckle on here where you can adjust the uh the gap of the mouth of the uh of the plier so that it, it can operate just like a pipe wrench but it's it can also operate like a set of pliers if you work with tools you think about this 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 comes in handy for all sorts of things Over the years, I've lost several ram pumps due to flash floods. They just simply disappear. I know if you go on YouTube, you'll see a lot of videos where people are mounting their uh, ram pump onto a, you know, a small board or a piece of plywood or something like that. Hey, I've just got the top of an old metal barrel on mine just to keep it from sinking into the sand. But I strongly recommend you get you some heavy cinder blocks and tie your ram pump to that. If I have a flash flood, it may tear up this system, but I don't think these ram pumps tied onto a cinder block are going to get very far down this creek. I'd say something that is definitely critical to a ram pump system are these Y splitters. I've got them everywhere. They are so useful. See right here I can hook up my delivery line and if I ever wanted to come down here and clean out my my pressure pump all I have to do is shut off my delivery line, shut off my drive pipe and open this valve and it will uh, drain my pressure tank. Or if I wanted to uh, do some field testing down here I could use this pipe here to run 
up my ladder. I've got a couple of spare hoses down here, 50 foot hoses. Yeah, I got one there and got one there. So I don't have to keep running up and down this ladder going back to my house. If I want to do some testing down here, I can just use these two hoses and use my my Y splitter. Another advantage to having Y splitters is uh, if you want to do a back flush. You know, like I said, I'm running downstream for a while and then upstream. So about halfway through my delivery section, uh, there's a big saddle in my pipe and my hose. And sometimes I need to back flush that. This does not have enough pressure to do a back flush. But I've got a 1.6 horsepower pump up at my uh, reservoir that I can connect to the delivery line and send water all the way back up here. And all I have to do is open up the, the Y and the water will come come all the way up the delivery pipe, go in here and come out there. Once it starts running clean, I can just shut everything off down here. Run back up to the house, and turn off my pump and still have water in my delivery line. No air in it. There are different brands of Y splitters. This is a very expensive one here. You'll see this on Amazon. What I like about it is that this female connector on here has not leaked. I've used this one off and on for three or four years and I've had no leaks off the female end of it. Most cheap Y splitters will develop a leak in there right where that swivel attaches to it. On the other end of the spectrum is a plastic Y splitter. The advantage to this is that the female collar does not swivel. It's stationary. So you don't have to worry about it leaking. The downside is that it's plastic. You definitely would not want to leave this out in the creek during the winter. And if you have something heavy on it, it's liable to break. But if you want a good seal, there it is. I'm compromising over here. I've got a brass uh, Y splitter, about half the price of this big baby here. But it uh, works for me. Another feature of a Y splitter is just how reduced the diameter, the inner diameter, is of this thing. You know, I've got a three quarter inch ram pump. And most design plans call for a reduction when you get to the delivery valves, like go down to half inch. Well, that ball in there is less than a half inch diameter. So by putting a Y, y splitter on there, you don't even have to worry about reducing your, your fittings. The only thing you'll have to do is purchase one of these adapters that goes from three quarter inch national pipe thread, national pipe taper, to a three quarter inch garden hose thread. And any home improvement center will have those. It's a very common item. And that allows you to go into the NPT fittings on one side and then into garden hose fittings on the other. So, Y splitters, important down here at the pump and pour them up in your yard when you're trying to hook up your uh, irrigation hoses across the lawn. Hey, I'm too empty to, I'm too lazy to empty this bucket. But down here at the bottom, you know what I got? I got some PVC cement and primer. And I'm going to tell you about the primer. That's got to be the thinnest liquid on earth because once you open the can, You'll never get it sealed up tight again. So, if you're going to be going up and down your creek using PVC cement and primer, put those things in a bucket. You don't want to put them in a cloth bag and go throw that on your dining room chair like, like I do. Keep it in a bucket. That way, if that thing leaks, 
It's not going to do it all over your dining room floor. The main reason I chose to put my ram pump here and just run a very long delivery line downstream as opposed to tapping in here and running a supply line downstream was the cost. You know, I, I would have needed at least one two inch pipe for a supply line. And uh, instead, I just got this hose. I bought it at Harbor Freight. It is a three quarter inch hose. And I bought it a few years ago. At the time they had it on sale, a hundred foot hose, $29. Of course, you know, with all the inflation and everything, it might be 35 bucks today. But that's a lot cheaper than buying PVC pipe. 100 feet for, uh, say, say it was even $35. I bet that's probably half the price for PVC these days. And what I like about it is that it's very adaptable. You see how much sand I have here? Every time it rains, the sand changes. And it may just go ahead and cover up my hose. That's okay. This hose is so sturdy that it's not going to collapse underneath the weight of just sand. I've even got sandbags on it. I don't even remember what kind of uh, bladder I put in these pressure tanks. I've, I've built so many round pumps over the years. I've probably bought five or six and probably built 10 or 12 uh, just different designs and stuff. Sometimes I'll just put foam uh, pool noodle in there and some I'll get a bicycle inner tube. You can buy the inner tubes from Amazon. Just look up bicycle inner tube and click on the smallest one they got. It's like three of them for 10 or $12 last time I purchased them. And so I did do a a video back in this I think March of 2021 called best ram pump design and when I did that test it, it indicated that the uh, bicycle inner tube as a bladder was a little bit more efficient than the pool noodle but the difference wasn't big enough to, to raise any kind of big concerns I haven't found that it makes that much difference between, oh, here's, I've got it written on there. I've got a foam noodle here and a bicycle inner tube in this one. I don't think it makes that much difference. But what does make a big difference is the type of check valve you use going to your, your pressure tank. I'm using a uh, swing check valve on mine. If you have a high elevation you need to pump to, you need to replace that with a spring tight check valve. You'll get more elevation with a spring tight check valve. It'll require more back pressure and I have very little back pressure on my system so that's why I'm using a swing tight check valve on each of these pumps. 